What's good, YouTube? It's your man, BG Tech Life. And as you can see, we got the Moto G Power 2024 on deck, guys. And I picked this device up. You know I like to pick a budget up from time to time and take a look at it. So what I'm going to do here is give y'all my two-week review on this device. So let's get into it. Okay, YouTube. So there's a couple things about this device that made me pick it up at the $299 price point. Now, while I did pick it up, it was on sale, so it was only $279 on Amazon. I put the best link down in the description that I see on Amazon for you guys if you want to try this device out. So first and foremost, this device has a Dimensity 7020 processor. It has a 1080 LCD screen, it has 120 hertz refresh rate, it has wireless charging, and you can charge it, fast charge it, up to 30 watts. Now with that being said, guys, I just picked this device up and didn't expect much at all. But I was pleasantly surprised that the Dimensity 720 processor actually makes this device work pretty well. When it gets into moving around the UI or doing some light gaming, this device is very consistent. I'm not going to say this is the fastest device and all the animations are super fast. No, but it moves at a consistent speed that's not slow. So I was really honestly surprised thinking that I would have to deal with some lagging and some glitchiness. But under an average load of things that you would do on the smartphone, this device performs pretty well. Also, this device has a 5,000 milliamp battery. So the battery life on this device is definitely all day. Now with power being in the name, I thought it would have a crazy amount of milliamps compared to the regular Moto G 5G 2024, but they have the same 5,000 milliamp battery. And I'm not complaining because I could get a solid day and a half of heavy use on this device. So let's talk about the 1080 LCD screen that's 120 hertz. The 120 hertz, when you cut that on, because you do have to cut that on, the device comes in 60 hertz, but it's very smooth. It's a smooth phone. 120 hertz works well with 1080. With the resolution being 1080, the Dimensity 7020 processor can actually handle moving objects and the screen refreshing at 120 frames per second. But now, at the same time, guys, I thought I was going to be really turned off by the LCD screen because my eyes have been trained by OLEDs. But for the most part, using this device, unless it's a black background or a lot of black on the screen, the LCD actually looks decent. I can watch content and I can look at the home screen and look at the icons and not be immediately turned off. It's only when I'm in dark mode and the phone is in certain scenarios where the black don't look super black to me but for the most part the display looks okay one thing i don't like about the display is the bezels guys now i'm okay with a device having bezels but when this symmetry is off when you got a skinny bezel up top and then you got a thick bezel down bottom that's something that i don't like personally if they could have just made the bezel even all the way around it would have aesthetically looked a lot better to me now that we're talking about bezels, let's just take a look at the build of the device. Now you got the faux vegan leather on the back, guys, which feels decent. Feels almost like a rubbery sandstone. And it's got a premium feel on the back. But what you let down on the build is the size. The plastic on the sides feels like plastic. And I mean, it doesn't completely destroy the, the feel of the phone where it feels super trash. But it just lets you know it's a budget. It's an under $300 phone. But I think it looks pretty cool. I like how they did the camera bezel. But on the back between the vegan leather and the camera bezel, it's a pretty stylish design from Motorola. Now this device front and back only takes 1080 video. And I'm cool with that. Because even if they did put 4K video capturing capability on this device, I don't know if the processor could handle it really well. So you can get decent 1080 video. That's all you get and you shouldn't be really looking for more at this price point. It is some phones that could do a little better at this price point, especially if you talk used flagships, but you can get some decent 1080 front and back 
and it's not all jittery and it's not shaky and the, the phone is not shutting down because it can handle the 1080. 4K might have been too much pressure for the processor in this device. And as far as pictures go, you can take pictures, you can snap pictures, they're just okay and good lighting. And then as the lighting goes away, it starts to get blurry. Now, overall, I think this is a good starter Android device. For somebody that wanted to pick up an Android device for a kid, I think this would be a really good device for the simple fact that the back is not made of glass. It's kind of a plastic build. You could put a screen protector on here, and I'm sure that this device will be okay. You could rock this device caseless. Also, they can do light game and subway surfer plays really good on here. So I'm sure some other popular titles that will play decent on this device. Again, I was surprised by the performance of the 7020 Dimensity chip. Or if you somebody that just want to get into the world of Android, you could actually pick a device up like this because, yes, it does have a Motorola skin on top of Android, but we still got Android 14. This device is not heavily skinned. And the little additions that Motorola made are not real tech. And they look pretty good. I really like this widget from Motorola. It's pretty cool. And I mean, it's just a very aesthetic device with aesthetic wallpapers coming out of the box. And now if you catch this device on sale for about 250 bucks, 280 bucks, I don't think you'd be mad at all, especially with the interface and the moving around. It doesn't feel super budgety. It's not the fastest, but it's consistent, and I haven't had any issues with lag. So definitely something that was surprisingly okay to me. I had a bad experience with my last budget, so I didn't look for much from this device. But this device is a pretty solid budget, honestly. And those are just my thoughts. This is your man, BG Tech Life. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. I'm out. Peace.